I studied Spanish at school um, and very much enjoyed doing that and was keen to, to continue. Literature is perhaps a, is a different way of thinking about our world and it's also a different way of presenting the same world to us. I have Iranian heritage but I, I didn't speak um, the language very well or know that much about uh, the culture and, and the history. Um, so when I saw that this course offered the unique opportunity to, to pair those two languages um, in which I was interested, I, I was very keen to, to take that up. On the Middle East side, whether you're going to do Persian or Hebrew or Arabic or Turkish, these are the four main languages, uh, you're not expected to have any background uh, or even exposure to the language. EMEL becomes much more flexible in the later years of the course. In, in, the, in your first year, when you're studying for your prelim exams, it's slightly more rigid. Everybody studies the same texts, more or less. On the Middle East side of the course, the main uh, emphasis is actually the languages. And then uh, the literature becomes the focus as you move up in the degree. Whilst we do have a lot of contact time with language classes and tutorials and lectures and things, compared to a lot of other sort of arts degrees, you're still expected to do a lot of private reading, you know, spending time in the libraries, um, just getting on with work in your own time, basically. You also have a lot of classes. So a lot of language classes and a lot of lectures and stuff. Um, and then a couple of translations a week for French and various bits and pieces of language. And then the same for Arabic, so quite a lot of language work. There's also something interesting we do called the bridging essay, um, which is basically like a thesis you have to write, but it has to be about something which bridges both of your languages. The course is a four-year course. Uh, time abroad tend to be the second year, usually, and it tend to be in the Middle East country whose language you, you happen to study. I know my friends on the course who've done it myself. You know, we really loved that experience and it has been very formative. Students who do AMEL tend to be students with an eye for uh, connections and intersections and parallels um, in the two cultures that they are studying. The Arabic is one of the oldest established departments in the whole of UK. And that comes with a lot of resources, both human uh, and, and uh, uh, resources at the libraries and facilities. The obvious thing about Oxford is that you've got a million libraries. Um, you've got your college libraries, department libraries and the BOD. You're you know, in a city where you have the unique opportunity to be taught by people who are interested in the same things. You are, and they're at the top of their field. The fact that you have tutors you can talk to and that you know quite well is really helpful. Depending on the paper I'm doing that turn, I'd have a Persian tutorial on either one of the parts of literature I was studying or my history paper, um, something about history. In a term, in the last year or two, has been maybe eight to ten, I think once twelve, but usually eight to ten essays. And probably a Spanish tutorial as well, which will probably either be every week or every two weeks. For me, the main uh, sort of investment of time comes with the literature essays because there's not just the primary text to read but lots of secondary uh, critical reading um, to do as well and that's in a way sort of an infinite amount of things you could read which could be sort of relevant somehow. I only realised sort of relatively late on in, in my last years of school that such a combination was possible. Um, and the moment I saw it, I thought, well, you know, I have to go for that, basically. Some interest and curiosity about cultural difference, about other cultures, 
some la la language ability um, or record. I think they were kind of trying to see how you responded to not knowing stuff rather than trying to see what you knew because the likelihood of a load of 17 year olds knowing a load like loads about the Middle East I guess is pretty small. Um, obviously I'd, I read some stuff and I knew some stuff but not not huge amounts really. If a student, a uh, student's interest is piqued by this particular combination of languages, I suggest simply beginning to explore the language you know less about immediately. And um, Oxford has this system of open days, you can come and talk to the tutors, you can come always and talk to the students who are taking that course. Just really think about what you're interested in, and if you're interested in the Middle East, if you're interested in language, if you're interested in literature, if you're interested in travelling, and if you're interested in working hard, this could really be the course for you. I got the letter from Oxford and kind of opened it without much interest because I assumed I hadn't got in and then was delighted. I want to do more study because at the end of four years, you, what you've mainly found out is how much more there is to know. And then it seems like it would be a good idea to know it. I quite like the idea of further study and, and think I'll probably end up um, doing that. I'll probably end up pursuing things more on the Persian side of things than the Spanish side of things. They tend to sort of um, pursue their postgraduate either either in a comparative context or um, obviously the field of international relations, the field of um, diplomatic, uh, field of business too. If you are serious about wanting to study the languages and the literature, so go for it.